Good evening, listeners. We are attempting an interesting task. We are trying to present Ravensa College, which is not only our temple of learning, but a mentor, life changer, and career counsel to many illustrious sons, not only of Odisha, but even outsiders who have had the good fortune of learning through its portals. I am Rajini Naik, whose association with Ravensa as a student come faculty in English spans some three decades. And we have with us today Madam Nivedita Mahanti, an eminent scholar of history who has written books on Odia nationalism. She has, in fact, done her PhD on the subject of Odia nationalism from Heidelberg University in Germany. She has also pursued her interest in emerging nationality in states like Odisha and Jharkhand. Last but not the least. Madam Nivedita Mahanti has taken pains to compile records and present Ravensa College since its inception some time back in 19th century, 1868 to be exact, till it has become a university in 2006 in a very well researched book of hers called Ravensa College, a Temple of Learning. We will hear from her today of and about Ravensa College. Madam, your pioneering research on the quest for a united Odisha and rise of Odia nationalism has earned you many accolades. Will you please tell us how could you make such an in-depth analysis of the history of Ravensa College, being a student of history yourself and a non-Ravensa Vian, Madam? A uh, good evening. To respond to your question, actually, when I was working on Odia nationalism. I did extensive field work for years, starting from the then India Office Library, London, British Museum, South Asia Institute Library, Heidelberg, National Archives, National Library, Kolkata, Medinipur Town Library, IIT Library, Kharagpur, State Archives, Odisha, State Museum, all the newspapers, starting from Utkal Deepika onwards, many private collections. I came across also the facts about the birth of Ravensha College from these records as a school to begin with, to the role it played in the growth of Odia nationalism. Not being a Ravenshavian, that is, not being a student or the faculty member of this great educational institution, didn't prevent me from having the pride mingled with much affection. For it is as it is to everyone in the state. In fact, madam, the way you are describing Ravensa College, anyone would feel that you have really <laughs> walked those lawns and those corridors and the classrooms, everything. <laughs> But as a researcher, I did. I am grateful to the first Vice Chancellor of Ravensa University, Sri Devdas Chotrai, for asking me, an outsider, to write the history of the great institution with the promise of editorial independence. This, however, didn't imply that the university would remain indifferent to my research process. The Ravensha Archives, Konica Library, the departmental libraries, the members of the faculty of staff were all cooperative in my fact-finding effort. Well, being a student of history, I plunged myself in trying to collect the history of the institution from various sources. The history of Ravensha was not confined to the Odisha region only. Being first under the Hooghly College, then with the Calcutta University, and then to Patna University after the Odisha Bihar Province was formed, uh, materials were collected from all these places: from Presidency College, from where the teachers came to teach; from Patra of Medinipur, from where the first Indian principal came; to Patna and Muzaffarpur, where the Longat Singh College and Ravensha College buildings were designed by the same architect. Also, again, the British Library, where the India Office Library included now, to the graveyard of Ravenshaw I visited in West Sussex, and his house where he lived, which Madhusudan Das. You mean T. Ravenshaw, Madam? Yeah. The one uh, after founder. whose name Ravenshaw. Yes. So I visited uh, his house also, where he lived, and Madhubabu had visited. Madhusudan Das had visited him in 1897. I interacted with scholars of various universities of the world and visited Cambridge and Oxford. Read the history of the Indian colleges and universities that came around the same time or preceded it in India. This helped me in doing in-depth research. 
Thank you, madam, for having uh, undertaken all these troubles to, in order to write your book. I remember Professor Sadarsiv Mishra, eminent economist and former principal of Revensa, who had said once that Odisha is known outside the country for Lord Jagannath of Puri and Revensa College. He had also said something like, if anybody is somebody in Odisha, he must be a Revensavian. What role do you think Revensa did play in consolidating the Odia identity over which you have worked so extensively? Can you throw light on the contribution of a few individuals who you think played a key role in this process, madam? Yeah, your question actually takes me back to 1936, the year when Odisha province was formed. On 18 January 1936, Ravanshakal has celebrated its Diamond Jubilee. Then the principal H.R. Batheza, who was a reputed economist of the country, he hailed from Sindh. Along with Odisha, Sindh was also uh, made... Sindh the one divided India, madam? Uh, yeah, Sindh was made a uh, separate province. Right. It was an exciting time for him, but apart from Odisha to be separated, his own state has been formed. On this occasion, Principal Batheza delivered an illuminating speech defining uniqueness of the college. I will quote him. And so we have at last a temple of learning, fair to look on, stately in its proportions, which compares not unfavorably with only other temple, the temple of Jagannath, for which Orissa is known all over India. This comment of Batheza was when college had already shifted to its present location. Going back to the time of the beginning when the high school was set up, Gauri Sankar Rai and Fakirman Sanapati, two captains of Odia nationalism, continued to write about the new higher education institution to create public awareness. That was the time when the language agitation took off. The unification of Odia's speaking areas scattered all over with other provinces had taken deep roots. The aim was to unify them into a single unit to safeguard the Odia culture and its history and heritage. In fact, the urge was to protect its identity, not to be lost in the power struggle. Fakirmohan, Radhanath and Madhusudan Rao took Odia literature to great height, followed by young literary genius like Ram Shankarai, shaped a new literary tradition in Odisha. And the most important thing, illustrious faculties of the time, S.C. Tipathi, Kasinath Das, the first Odia professor 1911, Arthabala Mohanti, Mohinimon Sanapati, Ratnakar Pati, Bipin Bihari Rai, Kurutibas Samantarai, Girija Sankar Rai, Guru Charan Mohanti, these all contributed immensely to the growth of the college. Students such as Anadha Sankar Rai, Karindi Charan Panigrahi, Boykuntanath Patnaik, Sarat Chandra Mukherjee and Haliyar Mahapatra from college formed a group of intellectuals and writers. A new epoch known as Sabuja Juga was inaugurated in Odisha. And Arthabala Mahanti and Lakshmikanta Choudhury formed Prachi Samiti to work on the classic literature. The college became a nucleus among the youth to discuss about the current issues concerning the region as well as to be aware of the wider issues of the world. So what happened? There emerged debating club, students association. In fact, a rising middle class was noticed who took keen interest in dealing with various issues involving education, society, literature and economy. So the leading personalities of Odisha all took interest starting from the writers, journalists, educationists, with Madhusudan Das's arrival in 1881, the movement took a strong nationalist form with his founding of the Utkala Sammelani, where he involved the college, its faculty and the students. His aim to have the youth force was possible through the students of the college. Would you like to call it kind of an Odia Renasha, madam? Yes, of course it is Odia Renasha. Besides all the Odia leaders by then and succeeding years were the students of the college or the school. Madhusudan took voluntary law classes when he returned to Odisha in 1881. Gopabandhu was the student of the college. Gopal Balab Das, the first MA from the college. By then, many students from the college were holding important government positions like Nandakishwar Das, Gopal Balab Das, Gagan Bihari Choudhury. 
the convergence of forces and the presence of intellectuals and thought leaders as a faculty members of the college infused a liberal and progressive spirit in young students sports and games debate and essay competitions lectures by eminent visitors like anibesand also came to deliver a talk please tell us uh, madam something about the legions from ravensa you must have come across in course of your research on this supposed temple of learning that is ravensa college which is now a university since 2006 any personal uh, encounter with some of these legions uh, well uh, the institution is uh, really having extraordinary legends and to write legends it will be another volume but i have just taken only one or two i recollect the story behind the sun dial that has been the symbol of the identity of the great institution and which has gone many incarnations over the ages it is known that when n l halward was the principal in the second principal of ravensa college the legendary jogesh chandra rai was the science lecturer i am talking of the time when the college was in its old location principal then lived near jobra which was far from the college so being a late riser he had to hurry to the college every morning he carried a small time piece and adjusted the college clock by consulting it during those days post office used to fire a gun at 8 pm everyone set his personal clock accordingly which however do not match that of halward and that of college when professor i told him about it The gun beat is wrong. My time is correct. Halward apparently said, "That was the time when Professor Rai thought of installing a sun dial in the college, which was probably installed in the garden of the old college." Oh, that's how the sun dial came into being. Yeah, nineteen hundred and two. Then, of course, Professor Rai wrote a book on this sun dial called Sanku Nirman. When we talk of uh, these legends, we <laughs> we cannot ignore. our legendary hero of the state was the, the chief minister but then he was a student biju patnaik biju patnaik who was a student in 1934 he journey with a friend from katak to peshawar on cycle in 1934 continues to be one of the finest legends in ravensha well this legendary figure has many such heroic actions to his credit it was reported in the ravensha vyan the journal we may also recollect the unique feat of crossing the english channel by an alumnus of the college mehir sen in 1958 in an article in ravanshavians he wrote his experience that during his first unsuccessful attempt to cross the english channel that he undertook because he wanted to disprove the fact that no indian had so much as even attempted to swim across let alone conquer it so he suggested to the students in ravansha wouldn't be wonderful if a few students of ravansha college explore the wastes of sahara or the depths of central africa wouldn't india be proud of them and of odisha that's indeed adventurous of them yeah madam uh, your well researched book ravansha college a temple of learning talks of two journals namely urmi edited by the eminent literateur the late mayadhar man singh and jagaran by the equally famous late kalindi charan panigrai will you please talk to us about the impact of the freedom struggle and the role ravensha college played in it that's very important uh, period in the ravensha college life now ulmi and jagaran in the 20s of the 20th century from two hostels east and west but they were not the only magazines preceding however the most famous the college magazine the ravensha vyan Earlier known as Ravensha College Magazine, published in 1916 in the old college during war years. Subsequently, in the late 30s of the 20th century, Ravensha College Weekly, brainchild of Professor S. C. Tripathi, then the principal, continued through the war years, but later on was withdrawn because of some difficulties. Then was their wheel under the editorship of Professor. a bv john of english department through 1948 and 49 the teachers and students contributed articles in newspapers and journals which are harbingers of the new wave odia nationalism at a period when the odia speaking region was seeking an identity both on cultural and administrative fronts so 
It had taken act also the students not only wrote articles on Odia nationalism and took active part in it. They had also taken active part in the freedom struggle from its non-cooperation phase to the attainment of independence. Now, during the non-cooperation, Hare Krishna Mahatab, Navakrishna Chaudhary, Nityananda Kanungo, to name a few only, were among the frontline leaders to quit the college. New ideas of socialism and communism greatly influenced them. In the young minds, these ideas inspired radical movements in Gorjath's states against the operation of the rulers. We all know about the story of Bhagavati Charan Panigrahi, who was punished for his demonstration and rebellion against these oppressive rulers. The most important thing regarding freedom struggle is that these Levenser students who always connected themselves with the world history, they unfold the tricolor in the tennis court on 26 January, echoing historic tennis court oath taken during the French Revolution to celebrate the Karachi Congress Declaration of Independence of India made 10 years earlier. Along with it, in 1942, they, with women students, sought to spread the message of Quit India across the province. And here, the principal was Professor Pranakrishna Palija. His daughter was taking a lead in this procession. And Professor Palija asked some of his colleagues, professors, who were also enthusiastic supporters of the Quit India movement, to go along with the procession. The defining moment came on 26 January 1946 when they declared West Hostel Republic and hoisted the Indian flag on the rooftop of the hostel building. And the college students, they held a procession from the... On the banks of the Katijodi. On the banks of the Katijodi from the earlier place where the college was held. They all came and hoisted the flag on the West Hostel. And as I said, Janaki Bolo Patnak, A.N. Tiwari were the student leaders on then. The, another significant event, on 18 December 1946, they pulled down the Union Jack, flying in the center of the field on the annual sports day. Didn't get any permission from the principal, obviously, but the staff members of the college gave the tacit support. And subsequently, when India attended freedom in the midnight, they all gathered and celebrated it uh, for a couple of days. It's a common perception, madam, that Ravensa College has been instrumental in enriching the cultural life of Odisha, churning out in the process artists, scientists, politicians, administrators, sportsmen, physicians, historians, and so on and so forth. Do you really remember any personal experience with an eminent Ravensa Bian, madam? Well, <laughs> The only higher education institution in Odisha to begin with, where all the aspirants for higher education joined, and considering the time, the later part of the 19th century, that was the Renasa period. It was inevitable that the institution would blossom as the Renasa flower and continue to spread its beauty in the succeeding period in the 20th century. Now, remembering Priyambada Mahanti Hasmadi, who took Odissi dance to the national level, to Akhay Mahanti, who brought a new tradition of modern Odia songs, Ananta Mahapatra, the icon of Odia theatre and cinema. Well, I know them all of them personally, very closely, because I myself used to dance, so I was very closely associated with them. Now, we can also recollect a cricketer, Lalatendu Parija, to sportsman Madan Mahanti. Now, what to speak of politicians? They all came from college, including most of the chief ministers. The writers like Sachidananda Rautrai, Ramakanta Rotha, Sitakanta Mahapatra, Pratibha Rai, Haraprasad Das, Devdas Chotrai, Sobhake Misra, and the names galore, including the earlier ones I have already mentioned. Coming to science, perhaps the name of Professor Pranakrishna Palija would tell us what level of scientist we had. S.C. Tripathi, Balabhadra Prasad were only a few names I mentioned. The tradition of science was strong because of the illustrious teachers that the college had, and all the luminaries of the discipline of history came from the college, initially probably from the waves created by Mas Rasud and Jandunath Sarkar. Our generation interacted with most of these luminaries and were influenced by them. Ravensa College, madam, is described variously by different people. To its students, 
it has helped them enrich the cultural heritage of odisha as it has helped others achieve excellence in other fields would you like to talk about this touchstone like personality of the college as you have found out must have found out in course of your research on the college madam <laughs> yes you very aptly described the college as a touchstone like personality we have been reflecting on its various aspects as the high education culture center well its establishment in katak brought to our attention as the second most important monument as heritage after the barabatti fort was set up by the gongas in the medieval time uh, let's discuss about social activities the boys were involved the boys volunteered to carry the dead bodies for cremation went to do the relief work during floods they opened schools for adult education and took classes in their off time they carried baji raut in a long procession when the young boy died in the police firing they went to kathojodi at the instigation of the teacher to get fertile soil for the garden in the college they were encouraged by the party to undertake boat journeys in taradanda canal nearby joined in all kinds of sports the teachers played with them including the british officials they were provided healthy snacks by the arrangements by professor tripathi they were taught to enjoy eating together on functions like community dinner in their commemoration days the alumni gathered they held dramas and all kinds of enjoyable activities in one such occasion in 1927 came janakinath bos we all know father of subhas chandra bos mm-hmm. subhas bos was a student of college school and janakinath bos was a student of college in the early 80s of the 19th century and then had continued as the pleader in kotak judge but by then he had retired and gone to calcutta he founded the old boys association and continued its as its president until his death in 1934 the association continued and was involved with the college activities and worked for its improvement the college hosted the legislative assembly in 1937 when after odisha was made a separate province in 1936 and its first legislature met the students and teachers who were exposed to the democracy in work saw the great leaders of odisha on that day on the first day when the the, the legislative members came to join the assembly rajkrishna bos apparently came riding a horse on that day mm-hmm. The luminaries came like Sarojini Naidu, Subhas Bose, Nehru, C. V. Raman. They all visited this college, all India Science Congress, all India History Congress, all India English Teachers Conference, all held here. So this actually developed the personality of the college. Literally, we can say, Madam, that uh, Ravensa was uh, having not only the who's who, but also it was what what is what. Yes, that's correct. Yes. Uh, madam you must have witnessed the changing contours of ravensa college from its inception sometime way back in 1868 yeah. to its present avatar as a university in mm. 2006 mm. do you think it merits a suitable comparison with other illustrious educational institutes in our country and abroad well, what are your takes on this uh, with great and committed teachers including the principal since the very beginning with exposure to the great universities outside the country with financial support from the rajas and zamindars ravensha had a very ambitious beginning when shifted to its new location the victorian building had many similarities with outside universities like its cambridge quadrangle the residential campus like cambridge and oxford This British architecture must have been at the back of the people who made it. Uh, yeah, actually, it's not British architect. He is um, uh, Mill Wood. He is from Australia, Sydney, mm-hmm. because he worked under uh, one architect, Mooning, who came from Australia, Sydney, to design the capital of Patna city. I mean, the Langat Singh College architecture was similar to. This Ravenshaw. is where. Langat Singh Muzaffarpur Muzaffarpur and subsequently when he built the Ravensha College the the lot of similarities mm-hmm. when i went visited Langat Singh College i found the similarities and astonishing the same architect its library conica could be compared with any great libraries of the country with international journals and books the teacher it was who jadunath sarkar in the beginning who selected the books for the library or eliminated even it used to remain open for the students throughout the night during exams time 
The students also from outside universities came to consult the journals in the library. And there were also music classes in the 30s, like Utkala Sangeeta Samaj, its branch in the college. It also hosted the Odisha Museum initially in the Conical Library and then shifted to the Mohammedan Hostel. By then we knew Oxford was the first university in the world to have a museum. However, Ravensa College Museum was shifted to Bhuvaneswar when it became capital in 1949. It looks like Ravensa College aimed and achieved the purpose of making a complete man of a student with all kinds of exposure and influence like the Harvard University of US. So in its glorious days, it was indeed comparable, I would say, with the good universities of the country and of the world. Many great academics from outside Odisha have contributed immensely to the growth of Ravensa College, which has come to be known as an iconic institution. Would you like to throw light on uh, some of them, madam? Well, <laughs> I can give a list of names, but I will select a few. First of all, I should mention the name of Syed Ras Masood, Oxford graduate and law degree from Lincoln's Inn. He was a close friend of E.M. Foster, who dedicated his passage to India to him. Jones is a professor of history at Ravenshaw in 1915. He was here for eight months only. He was an erudite scholar. His articles on Mahabharata were published in French and Italian journals. He had a unique style of teaching. He introduced advanced system of examination and the pass marks kept as 70, 70. He stayed, <laughs> he stayed for eight months, then was taken as DPI in Hyderabad. He became the vice chancellor of Aligarh Muslim University in 1929 at the age of 40. Mm -hmm. As vice chancellor, he also visited Ravansha as a guest in Commemoration Day in 1933 when he spoke enthusiastically about the, his experience in Ravansha. And we also have a Jogesh Chandarai. No attempt to write the history of Ravanshah College could afford to ignore the signal contribution of Rai Bahadur Jogesh Chandarai Vidyanidhi to its growth. The title Vidyanidhi was conferred on him by the Puri Mukti Mandap in 1910. Rai Bahadur, of course, the British government. For his multifarious achievements, he is appreciated all over the country, which are too numerous to be mentioned here. Right. In Orissa, he is very dear to Odias for his unforgettable role in introducing Samantha Chandrasekhar Siddhanta Darpana in the wider world. Would you like to spell out any vision for the future of Ravensa so that Ravensa can uh, retain its past glory? No, after discussing all this about Ravensa, you told me about that the fact that it has attained the status of university in 2006. It's right. definitely higher status. And in the meantime, it has attended the state of excellence and has uh, become very famous. And the second campus is in the offing also. Yeah. So having said all this, why we are looking for its past glories? It is because when Ravansa was there, it was the only higher educational institute and it got involved with the Odia nationalism, it got involved with the freedom movement, it created uh, literary genius, it had performing arts and everything happened. But afterwards, when there were multiple colleges formed, the teachers were transferred, the grants were distributed, and there were many national institutes emerged in the country, like IITs, like NITs, like Institute of Physics, like NISER. So the Ravensha scholars or the teachers, they also spread themselves into the national institutes. And they also went uh, to Western countries where to join the education institutes, various organizations to have the international feel, right. experience and settle. And when we say that we want to have the past glories, the first thing I would tell, what is the past glory? So we have to kind of present it to the students. We must have a museum of our past. And I am happy that the present uh, Vice Chancellor and his team are planning for a museum where things would be displayed, where students would be excited. So these are the things necessary to tell them, retell them the past history, the glorious history. Ravensha is the symbol of Orissa identity and I hope and believe that it will also remain as the Orissa identity. Not only retain its past glory but also forge ahead and ahead. be kind of a you know, beacon light for others to follow. Thank you, madam, for everything Thank you, you said today. Thank you.